Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to vampire survivors and start our new character with the power-ups that we have. We've got Might rolling in to help us do more damage, and let's see if we can make any progress here. All right, now Another thing we can do, as you can see right here, is we can actually unlock some new characters. So I could, for example, unlock Imelda and Pascalina right there. And Gennaro is 600 coins, so we could maybe get him later. So what we could do is, with this next run, just try one of the other characters. Now you'll notice that Antonio, who we were before, he starts with the whip gains 10% damage every 10 levels. Now, Imelda starts with the magic wand, and it says she gains 10% more experience every 5 levels, so she's leveling up faster. And then Pascalina is getting faster projectiles every 5 levels. So why don't we start and see what Imelda does for us. This is all just for science and experimenting and having fun. You might just decide between these characters which one fits your play style better and that you like and all we're really trying to do in the beginning of the game is just make enough money so that we can level up enough to get through this first stage so i'm going to choose imelda and we're going to rock and roll now we could go to the inlaid library um, but i'm going to keep going with the mad forest for now all right now you see, she shoots fast. And let's just go ahead. This is exactly the magic wand. And she's blasting away. Now something I wanted to clarify that was uh, brought up by someone in the comments, my our good friend Dark Faded. Uh, it is true that you can only, barring anything unusual that I'm not going to spoil, Typically, you have six weapons across the top and six accessories along the bottom. So, um, this is good to mention. I didn't clarify this enough in the first episode, but you can't get more than six weapons through typical means. So, don't pick a weapon that you're not wanting if there's one that you need and you already have five, for example. So, what are our choices? We could get the cross, we could get laurels, and we could get a whip. Well, what I want right now is damage... And I actually like the cross a good bit, and you'll see. The cross kind of like has a little bit of a boomerang zip to it. So it's something that you can work, and it goes to the nearest enemy, which I actually like as well, um, so that we can just hit what's close to us. But the cross has this effect of like, you see it just kind of rips through things behind you. So it does all this extra damage, uh, which is really nice. And we'll just go through here. Now, she's going to start leveling up really quickly because of her bonus experience. Now, another thing you can always do is on the level up screen, you can take a look at the right panel, or I'm sorry, the left panel. And you'll see in the upper left, you can see what weapons you have. We have the magic wand and we have the cross. But you notice how there are these like little squares underneath them. One is filled in and there's empty ones. That's actually the level of the weapon. So that's telling you how much you can level up that particular weapon and what level you're at with it. Also, below that panel on the left, it gives you a breakdown. Okay, we have 100 health. We have 5 extra move speed because we bought that to move faster. Our might is giving us 10% extra damage. And we've got magnet rolling on. Now, I'm going to take fire wand right here. This is a fantastic weapon as well. Um... As you can see, it just like shoots these fireballs, which do a ton of damage. So we're getting some good damage. Oh, there's a treasure chest bat right there for us. And we say, thank you so much. It's wonderful to see you. All right, I'm going to kind of just move back and forth a little bit here, up and down. And... I'd like to kind of get away from that wall at the bottom. Now, there's some chicken, but we don't need that right now. All right. So, 
it is important to reiterate that as time is passing, the enemies are getting harder. So you want to scale in order to do more damage based uh, to keep up with the enemies themselves. Now we could get garlic damage nearby enemies. Uh, this is fun. The magic wand or the fire wand increase its damage. Um, I'm actually going to take the magic wand to get an extra projectile. I love getting extra projectiles with things. Just feel like it's more efficient. You're getting that two for one. All right, and let's just keep working on this bat to try and... Oh, here comes a little wave. Get that treasure chest if possible. All right, we're going to take a little damage. That's okay. Now, there is that chicken over there if we need it, but we should be okay. All right. And the spinach. Whenever I see the spinach, I will take it. It's 10% extra damage. It's tremendous, and if you go wide, and by wide I mean taking a lot of different weapons, it's just gives 10% to all of them, so it really scales nicely. All right. And you can see on the upper left, the spinach, because it's an accessory, it goes below the top six boxes where my weapons are. And there's a nice big red gem. So, you know, that bat, I'm going to get this clock to stop time for a moment, which I was sure was going to give us a treasure chest, I guess it's worth mentioning that, or worth clarifying, um, they can they don't always drop a treasure. It might just be a bunch of experience, like we got in that case, which is fine. And uh, Darkfitted also brought up a good point, which is that this crown right here isn't usually something that you should take. It seems good to get more experience. First of all, we already get it with her, but you want more damage more than you want experience. Uh, because if you're not alive, you can't gain experience. So there's that to consider. Uh, I'm going to take more spinach and just improve all of our damage. And while time has stopped, I'm just going to pick up a bunch of this. And do some damage to the big group. Move through. I'll eat, sure. Alright. Now, in this case, uh, wings are one of my favorite accessories to get. This is 10% extra move speed because I feel great being able to just move around with a little more ease. Again, it's a utility. It's not doing damage, so you do want to be mindful of that and make sure that you are taking damage. But for me, um, I love maneuverability. All right, we're going to go ahead and fire, 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 sure. Just blast away here. Mm-hmm. All right, so again, no treasure, but a red gem if we can get in there. So it's going to take a second for us to kind of weave in there. You can see at this point we're bumping up against damage. Like we're just not doing quite enough damage. All right, so what do we want? How about... Uh, leveling up our magic wand, make it fire a little bit faster. That sounds good. We could escape right here, as you see. Have no real problem. All right, fantastic. Now, the bracer is another really good accessory. Increased projectile speed. That's fantastic. Um, but I think I'm going to start leveling up. No, I want the bracer. I like projectile speed. Just speed up our cross. All right. And our magic wands, of course. And just get them hitting the target slightly faster. And you can see that the fire wand... I mean, they fire super slowly. So we can kind of cut in here with time stop. This is what I'm talking about. So um, Empty Tome is one of the best accessories... It reduces weapon cooldown by 8%, so things just fire more quickly. So we're taking a lot of accessories, which could very well be a huge mistake, but these are good ones. These are ones that I like to have. And we've hit the five-minute mark, so here come the flowers. 
So we can just kind of hang out here, see if we can kill any of them. Maybe work our way through, but I'm not really stressed about it. They will probably disappear before they enclose us fully anyway. We can just take some time, and there's a bunch of gems over there. A little bit of magnet would be beautiful. There we go. They're all gone. Okay, so now... Um, a defensive ability would be good, like a Laurel. I'm actually going to take it. I can't believe it, but at this point, I just having that extra edge, and now we're going to really, really dial in and focus on our weapons. And one of the things that you'll just gain through knowledge and experience of the game is when to go for defense, when to go for utility, when to go for damage, and you feel it out, it's different maybe for each run, and we got a treasure, which is phenomenal. Get a little extra coins here. Okay, and we got our shields up, which is not the best, but it's what it is. And um, gives us a little more in, uh, vulnerability and some cooldown, so that's fine. But you'll start to feel like, what am I missing with my character? And if you make a mistake of just, you know, not giving yourself enough damage or maneuverability or utility, then next run you can try to make sure that that's bolstered. And it's all about timing. Each level is different, you know. Um, I'm going to take another projectile with our magic wand. I think that's great. You see we're firing a bunch of them. They fire fast. The cooldown is reduced. And if we can power up and even do more damage with it, it's going to be uh, quite strong indeed. Another thing that's great about leveling up a weapon to the full power is that you can start to try to figure out what you need to upgrade the weapon to its next state. Basically, every weapon, well, most weapons can pair with some accessory and if you get it to max level and you have that then that combination unlocks the potential for you to get kind of like a unique elite weapon that you can't get starting that is usually insanely strong and will help you a ton all right but again you can see like how the you know, we don't do a bajillion damage yet, but the, the move speed and the, the fact that we have a shield um, is really, really coming in handy. Right. Just kind of do this, and then I'm going to try to slowly find a gap so I can loop back down, if possible, and pick up a bunch of these blue gems which I've left behind. Now, sometimes you'll pick up a gem and you'll go up several levels. And usually that's the case of a consolidated gem. Uh, oof. I'm going to take garlic because I don't need any more defensive abilities right now. So garlic just kind of slowly hurts things that are close to you. It does not do very much to start out. It's nice because it sort of pushes things back and does damage if it's close, so the function of garlic is beautiful to have this ring around you that's like, you know, just going, and it can help close the distance, but without leveling it up, it's not great to rely on, but I don't, I need to be taking damage right now. So sometimes you have to kind of compromise on the choices. All right, I'm gonna try to stand in and get this treasure chest. This would help us a lot. Sometimes you can do this, especially with garlic. You can just stand in, in place and let them come and then make an opening and swoop back around, lead the enemies away from your little kill area and try to collect the gems that are there. Uh, but going back to what I was saying, if you level up a whole bunch, sometimes by picking up one gem, you either killed an enemy that dropped a big 
gem or all of the gems on the screen consolidated into a super red gem because you have moved too far away from where they are and this is really nice to just get them all in one but the problem is you can very easily forget where you left it so this is why i try to avoid that now sometimes it doesn't work out that way sometimes the enemies are hounding you and you can't really find a break and the only thing to do is just keep moving um this is awesome so now we can boost up our magic wand damage by 10 and you see we're already firing so many projectiles of it that this is going to be a very very substantial increase in our damage um, i'm gonna kind of keep hanging around here and it is the 10 minute mark so you see all of the flowers coming in um, i'm gonna hang in here i'm actually just gonna walk through the flowers right there we have our shield so we can just break through but i want to kill some of these highlighted enemies even if they just drop gems instead of treasures it's a good boost for us they have a bunch more hit points but it's worth chipping away at them and getting the drop for a kind of surge in power level No problem. I'm just going to pick these up. That's great. Alright, we're getting closed in on from some skeletons, but uh, we're going to take a little bit of damage right here. I had to just push through. There's too many enemies grouped up. There we go. Alright, so now we're in a spot where things are getting a little bit hairy, and we're going to start maybe looking for some chicken we could really use with a level up. There we go. And uh, what do we want? I think another projectile with our wand seems good. Now we need to find some food. We've taken some damage. It's, it's getting scary. Now these guys luckily don't hit too hard. But you can see how far away we're getting from where we were and you kind of just have to have a feel for it oops yeah and we're getting knocked around where we're probably going to die right here yeah we did but at the same time this is what happens early on you know you don't make a super far run in the beginning but you start to unlock certain features that either give you achievements and unlocks or give you clues and help understand what characters are strong. Now, I'm going to go to the power-up screen, and um, we need to figure out, like, what do we want to buy, right? Like, we don't have a ton of coins, so uh, we actually can't really buy. With what we have right now, we cannot afford anything unless we refund. So, unfortunately, you know, we didn't get as many treasure chests or make as much money and I, what happened there was um, we focused, or we, I focused too much on um, utility and thought we'd be able to kind of get ahead, but we got behind on damage. And to be fair, too, um, that's one of the, I wanted to show you that character because while it's cool you get more experience, it only happens every five levels, and it's a very small amount. And the magic wand is okay. But Antonio is still probably, um, you know, better in the sense that he just gets a flat damage boost, uh, and the whip is a little bit slicker. But let's go ahead and try Pascalina just to show you another character. So we'll go to the Mad Forest again, and her weapon... So she starts with the Rune Tracer. Now the Rune Tracer is strange, okay? It shoots and it bounces around and it's like a... Oh, it's like playing Pong with a laser beam. And it 
is odd. And one of the reasons I like... Um, let's... Uh, hmm. Let's get to Fire Wand. One of the reasons I like Antonio so much at the start is just the whip is a little bit more predictable. But let's see if we can have some fun and have a good run. Nonetheless, remember, all we're trying to do early game is just just make some money. Okay. There we go. Now again, you could see the fire wand. I just love it. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just fire... I'll follow the fireballs themselves because of how much damage they do. Now the knife we haven't used yet, but this is a very good one too. I'll take it because you get to aim it. It just goes in... It goes wherever you're facing. So it goes in the direction that you're facing. So it it is one of the weapons that is nice to have in the sense that you have some control over it. Like the fire wand, for example, it does a lot of damage, but it just fires at a random enemy. This, you have a little bit of control. And even if you're not moving, you can just face in a direction and keep throwing it. And then this, with this, you can, as you can see here, just kind of like target the elite enemy that we want to kill. Now, fortunately, knives don't do a lot of damage. Um, but they can get the job done. There we go. And what do we want here? Uh, let's boost our fire wand's damage up. I'll take an empty tome. It should be said, too, yeah, um, sometimes if you want to break, like, one of these torches to try to get food if you're needing it, you actually have to hit it. And so if you have only random weapons, that can be easier said than done. So something like a knife where you can just say, hey, fire right here at this torch for me, it, it does that for you. Same thing with, like, the Bible and the garlic. Even if they're not as powerful, per se... They can be guided. Oh boy. There we go. That's what I was looking for. All right. So we kind of just have to move around and let Rune Tracer work. And you do see that there's actually a good bit that we've killed because of our um, Flame Wand and Rune Tracer kind of bouncing around on the outskirts. All right, fantastic. So this will make Rune Tracer do more damage and speed it up. So I'll take this, and you'll see that Rune Tracer now um, fires a lot faster or travels a lot faster, and that's very good. So this is a kind of a character with this starting weapon where you might want to like just keep dancing around and keep moving because you'll be surprised at how many gems are in your wake that you didn't even realize where it's like, oh, I killed some people way over here with either my fire wand or rune tracer. All right, now we're talking. So we're going to level up our knife and now we're firing two knives. So you can stand in and just try to kill this bat, for example, with the double knife. But you always want to make sure you have an out for your movement. All right. Oh, boy. Okay, let's kind of start looping back around now. We're going to get the flowers in a moment. Here we go.
awesome. All right, we have about 10 seconds. Let's see if we can kill this guy. Okay, great. So, if we take another knife, we get another projectile and boosted damage. We will take that. We just try to, yep, there we go, kill it. And that will give us a huge surge of experience. And let's just work through here. Now, even with the knives, if we um, focus, we can maybe clear a path for ourselves. Here we go. And then now, I can actually, uh, I could maybe shoot my way through, but we don't even need to. There's just no point. I'm going to collect this level up. And we want another projectile with our knife. This is good. You can see we're kind of like doing reasonable damage here. And let's try to fight this Prang Manus because this guy will help us out with uh, a superior drop. So let's just kind of stand in. Also, if we get lucky with our flame wand, that will help us out a bunch. The, while the knife is amazing, if you're running around or trying to reposition, it can drive you crazy. But they do hit something eventually. So check your periphery and see if there's any drops. I'm trying to kill this praying mantis, but unfortunately... He's being insulated by his buddies, so it's kind of like harder than you would like it to be to actually hit him. So I'm going to need to keep moving. It's a losing proposition. We'll take this cash bag for sure. And do we want a defensive ability? I'll take one shield just to help with survival and then move on. We, we This time we haven't taken any utility really. There haven't been too many that have been tremendous to pick up, so. Here we go. Let's get that. All right. Okay. So, unfortunately, we leveled up our shield. This is something that's the, the reality with the treasure chest is it's going to give you something that you already have. So, if you have something that you're not thrilled about, it can land on that. And while getting a better shield is nice, you know, it wouldn't have been our first choice. That being said... Oh, boy, here we go. It's still nice to have. All right. So I'm going to start working around. And I want to come all the way back down and around. I know I have some good stuff waiting for me. And yeah, this is a time when you want to be moving anyway because of these roving bat brigades. All right. Pick this up. Ooh, cash bag. Early on, money is just so amazing to get. I mean, you're always going to want it, but it makes such a big difference just getting those few little permanent power-ups. Got a red gem in there. All right. So, what do we want? We want Nax. Give me some damage. Let's go. All right. So, we need to start hoovering up some experience right now. There's a giant chunk of it over here. Oh, this is perfect. Okay. So this will allow us to kind of just come back through this section and uh, pick up a bunch of experience without getting too injured. Here we go. 
We want to keep going with Rune Tracer. It gets actually pretty good if you can level it up. It's not my favorite, but... Sometimes you have to just compromise. Like, it's what you've got, so... Pascalina and Imelda are not characters that I really use. Um, ooh, there's a large cash bag. Very good. That's 100 coins. So, I mean, that's tremendous for us at this early stage. We will take it, and we are happy. Now, right, let's see if we can... Maybe... Get lucky and... Kill that bat. All right, well, we're going to get an opportunity here. I'm going to walk through, take a little damage, but I'd rather not be stuck. They'll despawn in a moment. Well, there's a big boy. This is what I'm talking about. Big cash bag. Go get it. That's huge. All right. Mm okay. So they will disappear in a, about eight seconds. For the time being, remember you can leave the chicken there. I thought I maybe took a little bit of damage, but apparently I actually didn't. Almost got killed there. That was rough. Oh, we're about to get killed. Oh, so close. But what's important is, and by the way, this is where you will die early on, is round 11, 12, 13 minutes in that range. It's very difficult to pull through, but look, by defeating, uh, we unlocked Rune Tracer and we unlocked the Lightning Ring by defeating 5,000 enemies. The Lightning Ring I really am a huge fan of. And we say done. And then now I'm going to go to start. We have 600 coins. I really think the best thing for you to do at this point, once you get enough coins, is to unlock Gennaro. He takes 600, but... He's the character that I make the most progress with early game because he gives you a permanent plus one projectile to all weapons. So every weapon you pick up, you just get an extra projectile right off the bat. It's such a huge boost. He does start with daggers, which are meh, but as soon as you can start finding some other stuff, it becomes insane. Like, I really like him much more than Pasquina and Imelda. Antonio is okay, but Gennaro is the one that I would use to start making money because he just scales so nicely to give you that extra projectile with every single thing that you pick up. So, everyone, I hope you're still finding this series to be helpful. This is what you do. You just gather money, you learn which characters are good for you, which playstyles you like, and which weapons and accessories you favor and try to get better at the game so you can push through that difficult 12 minute mark it's not easy and it's the first big hurdle but once you get some more permanent power-ups and some more comfort you'll make it everyone thanks for watching take care